um hey guys very good morning this is jatin here i am the moderator of this class okay uh, so prakash sir are you able to hear me uh, yeah jatin yes okay okay so let me start with this introduction of go to webinar panel and after 5 minutes i hand over this call to you you can proceed further with your discussion then yeah sure sure okay so perfect uh, okay hey guys uh, uh, this is jatin i am the moderator of this class and uh, prakash sir is with me he is uh, uh, the mentor for today's session as a moderator i have a responsibility to handle about uh, the infrastructural issues if you guys are facing anything in between the sessions uh also i would like to give you the introduction about this go to webinar panel if you are using it a very first time i give you the introduction how it exactly works uh this go to webinar is a, a tool similar as zoom you might be aware of zoom till now uh so it has a different control panel as compared to the zoom if you can able to see this control panel this control panel has several options few of the options are very important for you the very first one is a question window in your control panel you can able to see a question window uh, can you able to see uh, this please okay in this question window just type anything you look hi good morning hello whatsoever so that i can able to understand that you understand my instructions pretty well so just mention hi good morning good evening anything hi darshan very good morning hello joyesh hi shailesh very good morning uh, good morning sagar hello kanchan hi shubham hello shailesh hi swati hi sayali okay what about others i can see almost 40 plus uh, student joined till now and i can hear very few uh, uh, chat messages okay hello yogesh hi purnima hi akshat okay the reason why why i am asking you to type it down because uh, if in case you cannot i am assuming that you are not able to hear my voice that's why you are not replying back so uh, shall i shall i proceed further now okay hey mayur very good morning i am still waiting for other people almost 20 student replied 20 still not replied yet i can see able to see 50 plus student till join till now okay who joined just now guys you have a question window uh, just say hi good morning good evening so that i can able to understand that you are able to hear me okay very good uh, hello rahul okay what about others i just write few names hi kiran uh, very good morning i just no avneet kaur uh, are you able to hear my voice amrin mayuri soni uh, nitin matkar sachin adav i'm just randomly keep these names over here so that i am i believe that these people are able to hear my voice so that's that's fine i think if uh, 30 plus student able to hear my voice i am assuming that others are also that's wonderful okay so this is a question window uh, through which you can able to communicate with a trainer when any time you want uh, you can write down your question window and prakash will definitely read out this questions and give you the answers apart from this question window what is more important for you is 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 a hand sign which is uh, basically raising your hand signal so can you able to see in a left side of your control panel there is a hand which have five fingers just raise it up just raise it up okay that's wonderful i can see very oh, okay that's good i can see almost uh, 10 student has raised their hand can you, what about others just raise your hand once guys that's great 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 okay that that's wonderful okay so uh, i tell you what is the process of using this particular platform uh, and so that we guys in sync if you have a, now now you can raise your hand down please okay now you can raise your hand down that's wonderful uh, now how it works is uh, see we have a question window which is a some separate panel for us so a uh, trainer cannot go each and every time and look into your uh, question window so whenever you have a question the very first thing is you raise your hand once you raise your hand trainer understand that somebody has some kind of a doubt and uh, in this uh, break time or in this pause time he can just take these questions out from your question window uh, apart from this there is one more thing which i would like to focus over here is a mic sign so can you able to see a mic just on top of this hand sign mic 
uh, which is currently disabled for you. But if you want, I can enable it for you. If you want to speak to the trainer, so anybody can take a volunteership uh, who, who want to speak to me so that I can understand that we have a voice communications over there. Uh, anybody who wants, just in a question window, type it down, unmute me so that I can unmute you immediately. Anybody, quickly, unmute me. Say, type unmute me in, uh, okay, Shalesh, say unmute me. That's I do it right away, Shalesh, to you. So, Shalesh, now you're unmuted. So, can you able to speak to me? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. A little bit louder, please. Yeah, uh, is it better now? Better, no, it's, it, it was better as well earlier, but I was just understanding your uh, uh, zeal today. That's wonderful. So uh, yeah. uh, that, that's how we can speak to each other. Uh, whenever you require, you just mention unmute me. Uh, now there are more than uh, 80 students joined till now. Uh, as you know that if I can unmute all 80 students, there will be a lot of noise in between. So to restrict that, I just keep it as a mute section to all. But it's still, we don't restrict you to speak to the trainer as well as raise your questions over here. Uh, so whenever you are going to raise any kind of questions, you can directly raise from raising your hand raise out a question over there in the question window. And apart from this, you can also uh, uh, speak to a trainer using this uh, facility of uh, a two-way communication. Again, there is a response from a Sagar, say unmute me. Sagar, I'm unmuting you. Can you able to hear me now? Uh, can you speak as well, Sagar? Yeah, am I audible? I am able to speak now. Wonderful, wonderful. I can able to hear your voice very crisp and clear. So it means okay. that we are calling each other. Uh, that's good to know, guys. So I think I am done with the, my introduction session of go to webinar panel. Now I hand over this call to the today's mentor whose name is Prakash Kumar. Uh, Prakash Kumar is a senior uh, uh, most uh, trainer at Ethan's Tech for Microsoft Azure as well as DevOps. So he will be taking this session for today. And uh, I, I totally encourage you guys to ask a lot of questions and doubts, whatever you have regarding technical stuff. For admin related activities, you can speak to me anytime you want. Uh, post that uh, uh, meeting, you will receive a call from our Ethan's department. They mention about the feedback of this call. So please spend your five minutes to uh, to give your feedback. I want that this session need to be very, very interactive. Uh, so uh, make sure that you are not uh, inactive in this particular session. Keep, keep yourself uh, uh, active and encouraging and utilize this uh, uh, lockdown time as much as possible to learn something new. This is high demand technology at this moment. We have recently launched this uh, a course called as a Azure DevOps. Uh, mm -hmm. So I now hand over this call to Prakash sir and he will be taking care of it. Okay, Avneet, yes. Avneet is not able to hear me. Just a moment, sir. Shalesh, I'm keeping you mute again. Uh, I'm not sure, Avneet. Uh, maybe I can put my number over there in a, what, in a chat. Hey there, please call at uh, 855-099-001 in case of any technical issues, okay? So that if people are not able to hear my voice, they can uh, just, just let me check it out. Her mic, please check mic and speaker, okay? Okay, Prakash sir, now over to you. I am done with this introduction session, sir. Hi, uh, thank you, Jatin. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so today, uh, hel uh, hello everyone. So today we'll talk about like Azure DevOps and uh, how we can use it in real time. Okay, and uh, how to create CI CD pipeline based on the Azure. So uh, right now, uh, if you talk about like, if you talk about Azure DevOps, so is one of the trending technology, okay and uh, is like uh, all the tool in one roof okay that's why people are like uh, like you know uh, people are like following the azure devops concept in their company and they want to adopt it because we have almost all the features okay we don't need to look for any third party tool and uh, we can simply enable and uh, is like one of the easiest way to create the ci cd pipeline which uh, people want to do that so uh, in Azure DevOps, so before we start uh, with the Azure DevOps, let me talk about like myself so that you know we'll be, you'll be having a good idea that usually what we do as a uh, what we do usually as a DevOps guy and uh, like we are responsible for what and how can we enable the CI/CD pipeline and where 
uh you know like uh, how it is like utilizing or you can say enhancing the company uh like company structures and how frequently you can deploy you can release your product in the market so that you can do the business so uh you know like devops if you talk about like the devops itself so devops is in market from uh, you can say last from six or seven years and i'm into devops from last five years okay so actually i started my career with azure only and then i moved to the aws gcp okay and uh, so in last five years i have been working on multiple tools multiple devops tools okay uh, like azure devops docker kubernetes ansible terraform okay jenkins so you know what i found that uh still uh, in the industry uh you know like we have very lack of uh, feasibility in terms of ci cd creations okay so uh, right now most of the people prefer open source tool okay for their organizations but uh you know uh using the azure devops technology uh we don't need to integrate uh, all these tools because uh, all the tools are already integrated with azure devops as a task okay and we can simply enable it and then we can create a pipeline and we can simply release it uh, to the production environment so here uh i'm uh, yeah so i'm uh, i like uh, my total experience is uh, more than five, more than nine years and uh, uh apart from my you know apart from my training i uh, i used to work as a blog writer okay i'm currently working as a, a devops lead okay and i'm handling a team so uh you can see in my screen uh you know like i used to write blogs on azure devops docker docker and jenkins kubernetes so i have written number of blogs uh, which you can find uh, on the internet as well okay so let's get started uh, like uh, what is azure and uh, how can we do that so uh, in in very simple word the meaning of devops is like take the code and get it deployed okay uh take the code means like you know we'll be having a developer okay and uh, they are responsible for the source code and uh, we just need we just need to under, understand their code okay is it like java based code or we javascript or python or npm uh, or node okay so based on that okay we can create our pipelines we can create our cicd pipeline so in very simple word take the code and get it deployed okay but now you are free to uh, you know you are uh, you need to define how can you get the code okay so get the code means like you know we need, you need to think about a version control tool okay you need to think about how can you build it how can you test all the uh, how can you execute all the test cases and uh, how can you maintain the code quality okay and uh, then where you can store all the like artifacts uh, which can be deployed easily and where you can deploy okay you can deploy on uh, any cloud platform okay or you can deploy on docker based uh, approach like kubernetes or aks clusters or you can simply you can simply follow the pass based mechanism uh, which is like a platform as a services okay or you can uh, have a ci cd pipeline the vm base okay so the targets would be a virtual machines so you are free to uh, deploy anywhere okay it completely depends on your uh, uh, like uh, it completely depends on you that how you want to create a cicd pipeline so uh, right now why why devops why azure devops is in uh, market and why is very leading tool because uh, as i said is like uh, all the tools in one roof okay so uh, here as a devops guy uh, first let me talk about uh, uh, what are the like benefits uh, of having a devops and uh, what uh, as a devops guy usually uh, on which tool we need to work on so uh, here you can see on my screen as a devops guy you know we 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 usually work with the version control tool so the version control tool is basically uh, to enable the versions we can maintain all the versions so here the one of the best tool or you can say one of the leading tool is git okay almost now 95 percent people follow the git based approach and here in azure devops concept we are going to use the same tool okay and the next one is where we can upload all the source code okay in very simple word you can uh, understand the uh, like your g drive google drive okay so you know in google drive you can upload all your files document similarly uh, in terms of code okay so here we are going to use a uh, github and azure repo okay so they are uh, they are nothing but like the code uh, repositories okay like source code repository where you know we will allow our develop, developer to 
share their code on this uh, this type of a repository and uh, as a devops guy we are we will be responsible for the ci cd pipeline creation okay so now let me let me first talk about like the flow how it will look like in real time so here you can see on my screen you know like we have a developer and the developer is uh, responsible for the source code okay like the coding uh, it could be in a java python okay or uh, any language we don't need to worry about the language so as a devops guy we will be responsible for this this files like the docker file okay we will be responsible for the like kubernetes file and we will be responsible for uh, azure pipeline azure yaml pipeline so uh, here in azure pipeline.yaml you can see on my screen so this file is going to contain all the instructions okay how uh, how you want to test it how you want to build it okay and uh, from where you can upload your static uh, uh, static code analysis report and uh, where you can uh, enable the security in terms of like docker or in terms of your application code uh, related security so uh, devops is more uh, you can say devops is more over about the dev sec ops okay and the security portion com will, will come in picture uh, during the build process okay during the build processes and after the build processes okay so uh, here uh, the developer is going to upload their code okay in the github or in the azure repo and uh, as a uh, in, in the lab session we will be using both the repository tool because you know the github is a leading uh, repository uh, source code repository tool and the azure repo we, we have a separate concept of azure repo we also can use that and uh, during the demo session we'll see both okay so here as a devops guy uh, we're gonna write a docker file so you know uh, later on we'll understand what is docker and how can we um, how can we containerize uh, applications how to create microservices so you might have heard about the like microservices and um, how it works in real time so uh, during the lab session we'll, we'll create our own microservices and uh, we'll try to we will deploy it on a uh, top of kubernetes based approach so the next portion is the azure devops so once we have all the code the next is uh, you know we will need we need to create build pipeline as well as the release pipeline so I'll, I'll now i'll talk about like what what is happening during the build process so uh, in very simple word uh, the build processes are uh, you can you, you know um, we need to compile the code okay we need to execute the unit test framework and based on that we can build uh, so during the build it creates a deployable package and we call it as an artifact okay is a we, we call it as an artifact so uh, in very simple word uh, you can consider as a like a zip file okay if if i ask you to send uh, hundreds of file to a people so how are you going to do that so see hundreds of file we cannot send okay we, we can simply convert it to a gif format and then we can send it right so similarly in azure devops we are going to compile the code okay uh, like how many errors are there okay what, what are the vulnerabilities and what are the bugs we have we need to fix it and later on we can we can generate a deployable package so the next is where we where we are going to uh, upload all the artifact okay like that uh, deployable package so in azure devops we have a concept of azure artifactory okay so uh, uh, in azure artifactory uh, we can store all the uh, all the artifacts and eventually we can deploy it so the next portion is uh, what about the artifact and why we need to uh, you know why need to maintain that artifact and uh, what the package is going to contain so here in very simple word it is going to be contain your the web page okay if you are if you want to create a like um, static websites or the application so it is going to contain some uh, you know it is going to be a var file jar file zip file or the nuget packages okay so uh, based on the it completely depends on your uh, source code okay so the next is uh, once we you know once we have the artifact uh, the next portion is the docker docker build creation so here is right now you know in market uh, people uh, almost i would say uh, all all the industry all the all the leading companies are trying to uh, dockerize their application so uh, is one of the very hot talk, uh, hot uh, technology right now in market and uh, as a devops guy you will see uh, how to create microservices okay and um, during the microservices creation 
application uh, you, you know you need to write some docker file and uh, we'll see uh, how to do that and so basically it is going to contain some depend we need to write a, a file uh, through which we can download the dependency we can expose a port and then we can we can simply run it so uh, uh, you know at the end it is going to create an image for us so in very simple word the image is uh, in, in very simple word you, you can consider it as a like ISO file okay based on ISO file you can create some uh, virtual machine so in very simple word you can say is like a uh, images okay which is going to be deployed in my production environment so the next one is once the image is ready docker image uh, once the docker images are ready now where we can uh, store all the images so in azure devops we have a concept of azure container registry okay uh, so it's like a acr we call it as a acr so is one of the you know uh, again uh, is like a kind of repository uh, where we can upload all the images so in jenki uh, in uh, azure pipeline.yaml okay in azure pipeline.yaml uh, we need to upload all the images all the docker images to uh, acr repository like azure container repository okay so the next is uh, are we going to scan the code? Are we going to scan the uh, Docker images? Yes. So uh, in very simple word, you know, we cannot directly deploy. Okay, we cannot directly deploy. We need to have a process through which we can uh, scan the code. We can scan all the dependency. Otherwise, you know, there will be huge impact on in, in, in production environment. So here I'm going to use Equa. Okay, so Equa is one of the leading tool uh, in terms of Docker scanning. Okay, uh, you might have heard about the like Qualys or the Twist Log. So they are also, uh, you know, work as a uh, image scanning. Okay, or we also need to stamp it. Okay, stamp it in the sense, uh, let's say uh, Ethan's create an image and Ethan wants to tag it. So Ethan, Ethan simply can stamp it means like the image is now verified you can use it okay so in similarly we are going to use aqua here and uh, uh, once we have once we successfully scan the docker image uh, we can simply upload it so the build portion the azure build pipeline is going to contain this type of instructions means uh, build the clone the code build it okay uh, execute all the test cases and we also need to you know enable the sonar so uh, just generate the uh, sonar reports and upload it to the sonar server and then uh, build my docker file uh, docker, build my docker images and upload all the images to the acr like azure container registry now the release portion will come in picture so release is like continuous deployment okay continuous delivery approach so here we are going to use uh, azure kubernetes services and we call it as a aks okay and um, aks uh, is a one of the again a leading uh, managed uh, platform managed kubernetes based platform approach so right now people you know they they, they we all follow uh, this type of a strategy whenever we have microservices or whenever we have whenever we have like containerized applications so you know we uh, try to deploy it in a azure container uh, azure kubernetes services and uh, here you know what happened now we need to think about where how can we run it actually okay so uh, here you can see in my you can see on my screen uh, as a devops guy we are also responsible for k8s.yaml file and we call it as a kubernetes manifest file okay so uh, now in the kubernetes manifest file we need to define how uh, how how can we run the application okay where we can run and uh, how can we scale the applications okay and uh, uh, how can we expose it to the people okay so that they can access my application over the internet so uh, the yaml file the kubernetes uh, manifest yaml file is going to contain all the instructions and as a devops guy during the release okay so step number five so uh, you know uh, in a, in a release pipeline we need to define our targets so here uh, we will be using helm chart okay so helm uh, uh, using the helm chart we can is, is nothing but like the package repository and using the helm chart we are going to deploy all the microservices all the docker based approach or docker containers on top of kubernetes okay like azure kubernetes services and eventually uh, you know we'll try to we'll try to create a clusters and uh, basically you know we need to have azure account so that we can create we, we can create clusters we can create the acrs and later on we can share uh, we can share with our audience or uh, the stakeholders so uh, 
you know uh, once we deploy applications so here you can see it is going to create some services so kubernetes is one of the you might have heard about the kubernetes now people are asking uh, have you uh, you know are you uh, aware with the kubernetes services and how it works people people will ask you to create some manifest file for you okay and also we need to think about the uh, securities so um, as a devops guy you know we 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 need to write manifest file and um, the manifest file is going to contain all the instructions and at the end it is going to create some services and the services are nothing but some like url okay so you uh, like flip flipkart.com so flipkart is also micro microservices based approach and they also uses you know the aks so we are uh, we are going to uh, create similar type, similar type of application here and uh, the services can be shared with our end users so you can see this is like a complete flow of ci cd pipeline azure ci cd pipeline and uh, we call it as a docker based uh, docker and kubernetes based approach okay so this is one uh, this is a type of uh, one type of uh, uh, ci cd pipeline flow similarly we can have a different type of approach here okay so uh, let's say now i don't want to use a uh, kubernetes we have a very we have some monolithic application so uh, as a devops guy the flow will remain same yeah, here the target uh, are going to change so here you can see you know we have a developer and uh, basically they will be working on the source code and uh, the next is we need to upload all the image uh, all the source code to uh, azure uh, repository and from there we can create the build pipeline so you know build pipeline is going to build the complete code uh, and here uh, as a demo we are going to use java uh, node.js and uh, .NET code uh, as a code and uh, next is uh, you know we can upload all the artifact to azure artifact services and from there so you know uh, you can see here is like a approval okay so in real time before we deploy we need to make sure that we we have a approval okay and uh, we have some scan uh, like product scan so that we we do we do, we don't release a buggy product in the market and at last we can deploy it on azure uh, app services so this is one of the you know is one of the past model uh, which eventually uh, uh, we need to create so again people follow this type of approach as well okay the third one is like a vm based approach so the uh, instead of azure app services the last one the targets so here you know we are going to replace the target with azure virtual machines so now you can see as a devops guy we uh, first of all we we should be aware with all the azure uh, you can say the azure services so our first topic is our very first topic is the azure cloud platform okay so here uh, on day one we'll talk about like azure we'll talk about like app services we'll talk about virtual machines we'll talk about like infrastructure so here you know we are going to create infrastructure manually okay means uh you know we need to create some im users we need to create the service principles so that we can create that csd pipeline and um, we'll talk about like uh, infrastructure automation so infrastructure automation so here uh, we are going to use terraform terraform and arm template okay so they are like automation tool and we call it as a iac tool okay so uh, using the terraform we can create the environment okay like the azure app services uh, kubernetes uh, services can be created uh, using in uh, using automation and we call it as a like terraform so once your environment is ready now uh, you know we'll talk about like the git okay so here you know we will uh, create project and um, uh, we, we we're going to upload it uh, we're going to use the git as a version control tool and using this tool uh, we can simply upload it so uh, during this session i'll talk about like how git works okay so in git we have a version control we have a branching strategy okay um, also we have uh, you know we we have some git commands using the, using this git command we can uh, commit the, we can commit the code we can go back to the previous versions okay we can maintain all the versions so uh, during uh, the git session we'll see uh, how it works okay and uh, we can be using the git based approach we can uh, we are going to upload all the source code to uh, github and azure repo so uh, here uh, as a devops guy you know we, where we can build the code okay so uh, here we have some concept basically we need some target we need agent okay so here um, we have like two concept uh, is like the self uh, managed uh, agents or uh, we can go, go ahead with the 
a uh, hosted one okay so hosted ones are like managed by microsoft but uh, you know if you are going ahead with that approach so uh, we'll be having a very less control so right now in market or in, in the industry we prefer a self managed uh, azure agent so that we can uh, we can control it like from where we want to control it who can access it okay at any moment we can clean the directory we can clean we can set up uh, we can set up we can update it upgrade it okay so the activity can be managed and uh, the as a build tool so as i said you know we are going to use java javascript and uh, node and dot net core product so uh, basically we need to think about like how can we build it okay and uh, as a build tool we are going to use maven uh, npm and ms build okay so in market uh, people you know people ask you to how, how many pipeline you have created so far okay if you simply say i have created one pipeline means like java pipeline so again they'll ask can you create the node base node uh, js based pipeline can you create the javascript pipeline for me can you create a uh, pipeline for dot net based code so that's why you know i'm going to cover multiple pipelines so that you know you can uh, simply see that you have a uh, uh, like three to four year of experience okay three to four you are into three to uh, you're into devops from last three to four years okay and uh, the next one is like the uh, test tool and uh, using this tool you know we can execute all the test cases and once we you know once we execute all the test cases next we need to think about the static code analysis so here we are going to create uh, sonar server we are going to configure it okay and um, we are going to upload all the uh, reports so here we need to think about like the code quality okay uh, let's say uh, we have a developer who writes the code for us but how can i say that code is good okay so as a devops guy uh, we will be responsible for the quality gates okay you need to create a quality gate for them so that they uh, you know they they fulfill their criteria if the criteria is not matching then we are going to fail the pipeline okay so we need to think about in uh, you know uh, we, we we are going to set up that type of a pipeline where we have a complete production grade ready okay the next one is a container platform so here uh, i'm going to use docker okay and uh, using this platform we can containerize our applications okay so we are going to containerize uh, java we are going to containerize uh, node.js based applications also we are going to containerize dotnet core based applications okay and uh, as a continuous integrations like ci pipeline okay uh, in the ci pipeline we are going to use azure build pipeline okay and uh, from the cd perspective like continuous delivery perspective so if you you remember i was talking about like take the code and get it deployed so take the code means we are talking about like continuous integration and using azure build pipeline we can do that and get it deployed so get it deployed you we are you, we are going to use azure release pipeline okay and we simply call it as a cd that's why we people call it as a ci cd okay and uh, you can see that uh, we are going to use uh, ACR Azure Container Registry as an image repository and the Kubernetes services we are going to use AKS uh, and um, for uh, package repository package uh, deployment package uh, we are going to use Helm chart and um, from the configuration management perspective okay so initially you know we have done the automation using a terraform and arm template now i want to update um, my environment how can we do that we need we are not going to uh, update or we are not going to configure an environment manually okay we need to think about like some process through which we can easily manage so here uh, we are going to use ansible so during the ansible session we'll talk about like yaml file creations okay the play playbook creations which is going to contain some tasks okay so all the activity you know we don't need actually right now in industry why devops is very popular because we don't need admin people okay we can simply replace them okay using these tools so uh, here you know we have a uh, terraform we have a kubernetes uh, we have a ansible and using this tool we do not require admin people okay we don't need a linux linux guy we don't need windows guy we don't need storage people we don't need network people we can completely automate uh, automate the process and how can we do that so using a devops based approach that's why uh, in every industry right now in every uh, every industry they are like looking for a guy who has worked like who has created the production ready pipeline okay and we are during the session we are going to do that so uh yeah so you know we are going to uh, achieve this type of pipeline where we where, where we'll be having multiple branches and uh, you know we, go, we we are going to test it we are going to deploy it okay so the our flow will look like this okay
this is like a docker based approach and uh, you know we are going to do that so here uh, uh, during uh, during the session during the azure session you know i'll talk about the i am uh, i am okay like identity and access management uh, the permissions okay and uh, you know we are going to create some policies so that we can manage uh, the uh, azure environments and uh, the next one is as i said you know we are going to deploy our applications on vm based okay vm based approach so here uh, we need to think about like virtual machines so you know where we have load balancing concept we have auto scaling whenever there is a requirement we can uh, scale our environment and eventually we are going to use in our ci cd pipeline and then network portions so here you know uh, during the infrastructure setup okay uh, we need to have a network uh, so that we can create all the uh, like resources and uh, the next one is a uh, storage so if you talk about like terraform where uh, terraform is going to maintain the uh, tf out state file okay so that we can go back to the previous version if something goes wrong with my current environment or where we can upload all the uh, like code uh, documents so here uh, i'm going to use um, azure storage services okay and uh, the our targets are uh, in ci cd pipeline our targets are app services okay so this is like a pass model uh, you don't need to manage you don't need to worry where exactly is running on okay so um, right now people follow okay most of the people follow the app services based approach as well as the kubernetes based approach okay as a ci cd pipeline and uh, the next one is uh, we'll talk about like azure principle okay so that we can integrate the tools like how to integrate with ansible how to integrate with kubernetes services how to integrate uh, with uh, like sonar so uh, here uh, the we have a concept of like azure principles okay and uh, using this um, ids we can uh, we can integrate all the like tools okay uh, so in the devops uh, during the devops session okay uh, first we'll start with the git okay and like what is git and uh, how how it works how to migrate the code you know like people ask people will ask like uh, have you done the migration activity and what uh, what ne needs to be considered during the migration activity and how can you do that how can you maintain the history okay and how can you commit re reset uh, to the previous versions so during the git session we are going to learn all these things okay and uh, the next one is um, we are going to scale our environment at the enterprise level okay so uh, in in real time industry uh, how to set up all these things you know so during the module 2 uh, we'll see and uh, the next one is a uh, implement and manage the build build environment okay like uh, the for the cicd pipeline basically we need to think about uh, some agents okay so here uh, you can see on my screen uh, we are going to use um, hosted and the private agents okay so uh, we are going to set up the build environment where all the jobs can be built okay and the next one uh, in the azure pipeline so we have actually two types of pipeline the first one is a classic one and then second one is a uh, like yaml based approach so let me do one thing let me show you some yaml file so that you know will you'll you'll have a uh, that clarity how it works in real time okay so uh, the console will look like this and uh, you know here you can see like we have azure repo so you know we are uh, we are going to all we where we, we are going to upload all the source code okay so here you can see like we have that azure pipeline and uh, this is a pipeline where we need to you know we need to define all the uh, you can say all the stages and uh, we'll be having some other file so you can see on my screen like we have a deploy deploy file and this is nothing but like uh, comes uh, you know we are going to use this one during the uh, deployment uh, like releases and uh, here you can see we have some uh, uh, you know uh, we have some uh, wait a second yeah so here uh, you know uh, we ha i have uses uh, i have used uh, terraform so the infrastructure automation can be handled okay right now we don't need ad, uh, we don't need uh, cloud engineers okay we don't need cloud engineers to create our environment and using the uh, azure devops based approach we can do that okay so we'll see uh, how to create uh, this type of a file uh, so this is like a terraform script okay which eventually uh, we'll see during the session uh, 
so this is nothing but my code and uh, here in the pipeline section you can see we have a build and release pipeline okay so let me open this one so here you can see you know we uh, the first it is going to clone the code okay and then we are going to execute all the test cases and you know we are going to build it and the next one is like we have a release pipeline okay so using the release pipeline we can deploy okay we can de uh, we can have multiple releases we can deploy on dev environment we can deploy on qa environment we can add some stages and uh, also you'll be having a test plan okay so where you know we can upload all the test cases reports and we can have functional testing we can have a integration testing okay and uh, so this is like uh, all about the uh, azure repo okay azure pipeline azure dashboard yeah so the next one is managing all the secrets because you know is one of the key factor so uh, you will be having a contributor right and uh, based on that you know you can create some certificate and you can manage all the token secrets so uh, we'll see uh, how to do that uh, uh, in real time and uh, the next one is a continuous integration process so you hope you remember the build build section so here you know we are going to see uh, how to set up the build pipeline how, where where we can build the jobs also uh, we'll see uh, how to integrate with jenkins we all we are going to use uh, jenkins as well okay uh, in one of the lab and uh, uh, here uh, we are going to use uh, java and uh, .NET and uh, node.js code uh, for the ci cd perspective and uh, from the code quality perspective we are going to use uh, sonar okay so all the integrations will be uh, done uh, during the lab sessions okay and uh, finally the implement container uh, based approach so here we are going to use uh, azure container registry and this is one of the you know uh, now nowadays people wants to have uh, this type of approach so that you know we can we can have a microservices we can simply uh, releases uh, only uh, one microservices we don't need to worry about the other microservices uh, so during this session i'll talk about microservices creations and how they works in real time okay and the next one is a uh, uh, cd based approach so here uh, basically this is nothing but like a release pipeline okay so we need to define our releases okay we need to define strategy uh, how we are going to deploy in production environments okay and uh, during the production environment uh, what what are the things which need to uh, you know which we need to keep eyes on because uh, releases are very critical okay and uh, here uh, we, you, you know we are going to use different uh, different uh, deployment approach like the blue green uh, deployment approach so this is one of the uh, you know one of the uh, deployment approach uh, we use in kubernetes okay and uh, we'll be having some helm chart based approach so here again uh, we can deploy on uh, kubernetes based services like aks and uh, then finally uh, will be uh, you know will be responsible for uh, dependency management so like all the variable all the secrets can be managed and the security portion will come in picture like equa okay and the image scanning and the application scanning as well and uh, the last one infrastructure automation so we are going to use terraform okay and uh, from the deployment perspective deployment and configurations perspective we are going to use ansible okay so during this session the, i'll talk about role ansible playbook yamls and all okay and uh, the fi the finally uh, the end to end uh, project okay uh, which we'll see uh, at last uh, okay so you can mention in your resume that you have created you have created ci cd pipeline uh, for uh, tomcat tomcat maven java uh, sonar cube okay so this is one of the this is one of the example uh, which we'll see uh, at last okay and also you can write that you have created a pipeline for app based approach okay like a dot net and also uh, we'll see a pipeline for node.js code okay and uh, we, we are going to implement a complete end to end pipeline for docker based approach docker and kubernetes based approach okay and uh, how to automate infrastructure using uh, terraform and ansible so we are going to create one more project for that okay and um, we'll see uh, how it works and the finally the microservices deployment using helm chart acr and aks so we uh, at the at this at the end we are going to uh, i'm going to you know see uh, we'll, we'll tell you how to create 
uh, the CI/CD pipeline. The this is nothing but like end-to-end -end flow. Okay, which eventually because we cannot see and you go you also can mention in your resume so uh, I'll, I'll uh, also so share some sample resume and uh, You know you can use that you can use that template You just need to update your names and uh, all these things also. I'm going to share some interview questions. Okay uh, like uh, the, the interview questions as, as well as the answer so you can easily crack and uh, if you talk about like how many experience you can show in your resume so like uh, three to four years This is actually advanced course. Okay uh, this is a very advanced course of DevOps or uh, like uh, yeah. So you can ask questions if you have any Okay guys if you want uh, um, Prakash can unmute you so if you have any kind of questions, you can have this session now open for a discussion. So whatever questions you have, you can just uh, raise it up over the question window or either you can ask to unmute you so that you can discuss how much uh, uh, you can discuss the things with Prakash directly. Prakash sir, can you able to see the question window? Yeah, 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 Jatin, yes. So there are a couple okay, so, of questions. Yeah, sure. So we have a question from Sachin. Uh, hi. So he is working as a network security engineer, and uh, he is working on switches, router, firewall, proxy, and he is uh, having basic knowledge of AWS, Azure, Linux, and uh, yeah, he he is not aware with the uh, programmatical knowledge. So uh, yeah, Sachin. Uh, though uh, considering that you are from network uh, security background and uh, you have a basic understanding of like uh, uh, Azure and um, the AWS. So uh, yeah, yes, you can go. You can go for the course because you know uh, eventually we are going to replace all. Uh, as you can see on my screen, you know we have a, like Terraform. We have a like a, a Ansible. So they are nothing but like automation tool. Okay and uh, uh, eventually we don't need uh, we don't need uh, you you know like we don't need to worry about the network how, how it is going to manage because uh, the script is going to manage for us okay and uh, using the script using the terraform script we can create you know we can create the network we can enable the securities we can open the port we can disable the port port okay so now we, we need to think about uh, you know automations perspective how can we do that so here uh, in devops we have tools actually okay so uh, yeah So we have questions from uh, So we have a question from Swati so uh, yeah the actual demo or uh, the actual lab session, you know will uh, will do during the course uh, So we have a question from Rajesh uh, How much duration okay, so duration would be uh, two and a half to three months Rajesh so uh, here uh, I'll talk first. I'll talk about like Azure and then we'll start with the uh, Azure uh, DevOps based approach and uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about like uh, a Kubernetes docker ansible and terraforms Okay, so we have a question from Parul uh, Does it requires any coding or just uh, tool handling? So uh, yeah, you need you don't need to worry about like coding uh, Parul because we'll be having a developer. Okay, and uh, they'll be responsible for the source code like Java JavaScript Python and as a DevOps guy you need to think about like, you know The programmatical actually okay uh, like the uh, cell scripting portions or the PowerShell and uh, you know This is uh, is it like a part of our course actually okay the scripting portion is part of our course So, you know, I'll, I'll talk about the scripting. Okay scripting knowledge is required as a DevOps guy not the programmatical Uh, so we have a question from Swati. Are you going to teach Ansible and other uh, required things? Uh, yes, Swati uh, Ansible is part of our course. So, you know, we'll uh, we'll talk about like Ansible playbook and then the and in the very simple word uh, how to write the playbook how to write the task Okay, and we'll talk about like handlers role. Okay, and uh, how can we manage? How can we you know? How can we configure patch our systems and the infrastructure automation can be handled using Ansible? So yes, uh, we'll uh, is a part of our course. 
so we have a question from rajesh do we require dotnet language uh, as i said rajesh uh, no not required but yeah we need to you know we need to think in that way uh, like uh, how to build it actually okay so here uh, we are going to use ms build so uh, in the ms build actually you know you are going to use that tool and uh, you need to in in integrate with uh, the dotnet based project so that you can simply build it Uh, so we have a question from Darshan. We will be using Azure tool mostly or create VM and do the installation. So uh, Darshan, yes, initially uh, we'll talk we'll talk about like uh, manual uh, infrastructure. Okay, and later on uh, we'll uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to automate it using Terraform and Ansible. Okay, so the infrastructure automation in uh, the we don't need to create infrastructure manually. Okay, we can have an automate process. We just need to click on the pipeline and automatically the infrastructure will be ready for you. Okay, you can simply use it. So uh, we have question from Sumita. Now I, as you said, you three to four years. So Sumita, uh, I can understand that uh, you you had total one one and a half year of experience. So yes, you can you know uh, you can simply so that you are working as a DevOps guy from last uh, one and a half years. Uh, so we have a question from web how uh, do we need to know the any programmical language for this course? Uh, no, no web how uh, we are going to use a uh, scripted. Okay, L the scripted method like uh, cell, sc cell script and the PowerShell. Okay uh, But yes uh, here, uh, you know uh, during the ansible session ansible session ansible uses actually yaml So I'll teach uh, I'll teach you yaml. Okay how to write the yaml file. Okay and uh, during the terraform so terraform uses hasicop language like hcl language okay so uh, hcl language um, cell script powershell okay and then yaml uh, are part of our course okay so we have a question from uh, amar i'm dotnet developer with eight plus year of experience can cicd pipeline be integrated with other third party provider like uh, team city jenkins so uh, as i said uh, amar yes we we are they are nothing but like task for us okay and uh, we can integrate with third party tools as well okay so uh, in the azure pipeline we have that option like um, okay if you go to the pipeline so in the pipeline we'll be having that option called task okay and we can add multiple tasks here okay we can add multiple tasks and uh, all the tasks uh, if i open so here you can see on my screen we'll be having a task section okay we can add task so here you can add third party tools okay you can integrate it with uh, gcp you can integrate with aws okay you can integrate with your on prem tool as well okay so if i talk about like jenkins so yes we can integrate we can also use jenkins as a uh, continuous integration tool okay so it's very simple Uh, we have a question from Swati. Will there be assistance for the certificate? Uh, yes, Swati. Uh, I'll, I'll share some sample, uh, you know, uh, so some sample certification, so some sam sample questions for the certifications. So we have a question from Manis. As it is an advanced course, so the things will be covered yes uh manish is a very uh, you know is a like advanced course and uh, also i'll cover the basic portions as well because uh you know it's like uh, also the part of our course you can see on my uh, you know we have a like azure uh, we have a like separate portion for azure so basic things will be covered yeah the next we have question from kiran i'm not good at scripting or coding so don't worry kiran you know uh, is a uh, scripting and code uh, uh, scripting is part of our course okay so i'll teach you uh, how to write cell script how to write powershell okay how to write yamls and the hasicop language yeah, so that you, you know you can create the 
a CI/CD pipeline and you can automate your infrastructure. You can automate the deployment process. You can automate, uh, you know, automate all the admin related activities. Okay, so we have a question from Swati. What all script tool? So as I said, you know, Python, uh, we are going to use cell script PowerShell. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Sumita. Can I switch from network security to DevOps rule? Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Sachin, you can uh, definitely switch from your current uh, technology to the DevOps. And DevOps is very hot right now. Okay, DevOps is really trending technology. And uh, in market, you know, there are like number of DevOps job jobs. Okay, so you can definitely, uh, uh, I mean, once you're done with the course, you can uh, get the job very easily. I'll share the sample questions as well. Okay, sample interview questions. Uh, so we'll we have a question from uh, Prem Nath. Uh, yeah, he's saying that uh, during the microservices creation, how we are going to do. So uh, Prem Nath, yes, uh, during the you know microservices creation will be will will uh, will require some uh, programmatical knowledge, some basic understanding only. Okay. We have a question from Rahul. Uh, Rahul, can you please post your question? Okay, so we have uh, the next question is from Sagar. Uh, the Sagar is asking, would Jenkins also be covered? So yes, uh, uh, Sagar, uh, I'm going to, you know, we are going to for one lab, we are going to use Jenkins, okay, and we are going to integrate with uh, with our existing CI/CD pipeline. So we have a question from Purnima. Uh, I'm um, .NET developer with almost six years of experience. So yes, Purnima, uh, yes, you can switch your uh, uh, current, you can switch to DevOps, okay, yeah. So, okay, so next question is from Rajesh. We will get the recorded session. Yes, Rajesh, uh, I'm going to record the session and uh, you know, once we are done with the lab, I'm going to upload it to, uh, I'm going to share it over the G drive, okay, like Google Drive. Okay, so we have a question from Rahul. Uh, how do we decide which IC platform to use? Uh, here you have demonstrated Terraform. What are the factor of uh, this choosing this tool? So uh, Rahul, you know, uh, whenever we talk about like Terraform, so Terraform is, Terraform supports multi-cloud strategy. Okay, multi-cloud strategy in the sense we can we, our targets could, could be Azure or we can you know targets could be uh, AKS clusters or target could be like GCP. So Terraf using why Terraform because Terraform supports all the platform. Okay, you also can deploy on your on-premises uh, solutions. Okay, so that's why Terraform is uh, the, the Terraform is, is is in like market right now. Uh, also, you can use a native tool called ARM template. Okay, but uh, uh, in industry, you know, we prefer Terraform because you know we we, we can have a multi-cloud strategy. Okay, later on, if required, we can deploy on different different targets. So yes, I'll talk about like tool decision. Okay, uh, why we are going to uh, you know why we are using Terraform? Why not ARM template? Why not like Chef Puppet? Okay, why Ansible? Okay, yeah. So during the session, I'll talk about uh, all these uh, tools. So we have a question from Rahul. What would be the expectation from uh, me alongside? So Rahul, if possible. Uh, you know, just go through some uh, like Azure sessions, okay? Uh, because you know Azure is uh, needed for this course. Uh, like basic understanding is required. By the way, I'm going to cover that uh, during the session. Okay, so we have a question from Swati. Uh, when the course is starting and what will what will be the schedule? So uh, Swati, uh, Ethan's team will contact you, okay? And uh, uh, you, you can you you know like uh, Ethan's team is uh, you, you can check with the Ethan's team uh, for the timings. Uh, most probably the timings uh, you know we uh, is like uh, weekend on the weekend uh, like 10:30 to 11:30 uh, like three hours Saturday Sunday. But yeah, for the timings uh, timings just uh, contact Ethan's team one more time. Yeah. 
okay we have a question from parul um react developer will that mean uh, an, any benefit for the devops so yes uh, parul because you know dev, as i said you know devops is uh, one of the leading uh, you can say one of the leading technology in market right now and uh, like people are looking for a guy who has worked on so and so tools who is uh, having uh, i mean who is from development background or who is like from uh, admin background so like people are looking for this type of guy who can create ci cd pipeline for them okay so yes is uh, really going to be beneficial for your career as well So we have a question from Webho. What the prerequisite for this advanced DevOps course like uh, the technology? So uh, Webho, as I said, if possible, uh, just go through some, you know, like Azure sessions and uh, if possible, uh, just, uh, you know, just try to understand the basic Linux, okay, because, you know, during the Docker and Ansible, uh, Docker, during the Docker and Kubernetes session, uh, Linux is like required. Okay, so just go through some basic Linux, like uh, basic Linux command, and uh, if possible, also go through some Azure uh, like uh, videos or Azure uh, uh, document uh, for uh, as a like prerequisite. Pre Any other questions, guys? So for the timings, Ethan's team is going to contact you, okay? and uh, you can also uh, keep in touch with uh, the Ethan's team yep. okay so i think there is a question from uh, rahul he say that uh, is it okay if i haven't worked on any platform such as ansible or java so rahul has already discussed by prakash sir you don't require any kind of a prerequisite programming understanding of uh, it so DevOps is basically a process which you need to understand to build a, a continuous integration and continuous deployment. So even we have seen the people coming from a, a different background who wanted to move their career to IT. They choose this language, uh, they choose this platform actually, a DevOps platform to move into IT. So nothing required as such in terms of uh, any programming understanding of it. You can immediately jump your start career into it. I hope you can able to uh, can we repeat the session in later course if required? Rajesh, as discussed by Prakash, every session is getting recorded and shared with you after the class. So even if you miss any of the session, you can just go back and uh, review this session through the recording. So this facility we are going to provide to each and every student who join at Ethan's. Uh, is it a paid course and if how much? Uh, Parul, yes, it is a paid course. Uh, you have to pay for uh, this course and uh, this course is getting started from uh, uh, from upcoming week and uh, the team from Ethan's sales will get in touch with you. If you are really interested to join this course, I would really recommend that because this is the hot going technology into the market at this moment. And we have seen in this business, we have seen a huge demand, huge, huge demand from the customer side of it. So very good technology to learn in terms of a job perspective. Okay. So any other questions guys, we can able to handle it here. Uh, are there any requirement for 1.5 years of experience in Azure DevOps? Sumita, I just tell you very frankly is Azure DevOps is pretty new into the market. Okay. From last two years, it is actually taking up a huge new hold into the market. So if you are having 1.5 or 2 years of experience, not more than that, you are still very, very effortive over here to get a job into the market because uh, the technology itself is came two years back. So not very, very old. Uh, so which is getting demanded into the market. So if 1.5 years is, is, is really excellent to you, in fact, knowledge of this particular technology will give you the job. Uh, we have seen that almost 60% uh, of the student uh, 
they able to crack an interview post uh, training uh, within a 15 days of time of post training so that kind of a skills need to be developed into you so this course give you the enhanced wings through which you can able to grab or crack any kind of interviews in market Okay, uh, Sumita, is your question answered by me? Okay, anybody wants to speak to us? Or shall we wrap up this uh, meeting? How much time in percent it will cover uh, AWS related concepts and services? Almost 50%, I would say, Rajesh. Yeah, hi, Rutuja. Uh, so the whole understanding, Rajesh, is we need to deploy these uh, uh, tools, DevOps tools over uh, Azure. So this integration is already available over here. We need to understand this integration and, and create our pipeline. Now, I hope that at that time you understand what is this pipeline. This is quite... Uh, a kind of uh, a jargon word into DevOps language. Okay. Uh, then, if you don't have guys, if you do not have any other questions, I think we should wrap up. I already placed my number over the chat, uh, and uh, definitely you will receive a call uh, uh, by today evening or tomorrow regarding the feedback. Uh, please spend your five minutes. Okay, and. Uh, whatever doubts and questions you have you can reach out to us as well we are a part of a technical team and uh, they can uh, just uh, uh, you know do the conference call whenever required if you face more difficulties or if you have more concerns or questions okay anything else guys okay so then we can wrap up now yeah, 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 sure. Chalo, thank you so much, sir, for your time. I uh, keep you posted post class. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Jitin. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, everyone.